All right, Shalom, 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 Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Yahweh Kakadash, Yahweh, being the one and only true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the Spirit and power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole full elect. And Shalom to you, sincere brother, scattered abroad, pushing forth this word of truth and sincerity. I am Iraza Ka from the tribe of Gad, coming through the spirit. And uh, pretty much, this is going to be titled as the Trinity Doctrine. All right. And the reason why I titled this lecture as the Trinity Doctrine is to edify those brothers that is new in this truth that may come across my video. You know, uh, this is for you guys that's coming out of those religions, you know, and coming to this truth. Now, um, you got a lot of. Israelite wacky tacky Christians that's you know in the religion of Christianity they believe in the Trinity doctrine you know they believe that the Heavenly Father the Holy Ghost and the Messiah are all one person they believe that the Messiah is the Heavenly Father and that's a big ass no no all right that's that's nowhere in the scriptures all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go through research and we're going to bring out this uh, this this understanding you know through the spirit and power Yahweh about Shimei Ashai. Lord willing, this video is edifying. So one thing <clears throat> that you need to understand is you got to ask yourself, where did the Trinity doctrine come from? Where did it, where does it goes back to? Okay. So remember that question. Ask yourself, what is the Trinity doctrine and where does it go back to? All right. Because the scriptures say there's nothing new under the sun. So we got to understand where things started from. All right. So this is called this. You can look this up. This is an article. If you see above, it says the origins of the Holy Trinity, so-called Holy Trinity. All right, because the Trinity is unbiblical. It's nowhere in the scriptures. All right, so we're going to read this. It says the Christian doctrine of the Trinity. All right, it says Trinades, uh, Trinad. It says uh, from Latin Trinis, uh, threefold. It says holds the God is one God. The three coternal cons cub persons of the of the hypotes, the hope the hypotes, the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit as one God in three divine persons. So this is the doctrine that's in Christianity. They believe that, it says it right here, the Heavenly Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is all one God in three in three divine persons. Okay, now you got to understand, you got to understand where this is coming from, all right? So we know that it's coming from Christianity, but Christianity took it this type of doctrine from some other doctrine, all right? Not doctrine, but from some other custom, a heathen custom, all right? We're going to get to that. It says the three persons are distinct. It says yet are one substance in the sense of nature. All right. Now I want to go. I want to get go to the main. Um, let me see. I want to get to the main point. All right. Because <clears throat> I want to get this out and I don't want this video to be too long. It says, the surprising origins of the Trinity Doctrine. It says, few understand how the Trinity Doctrine came to accept it. It says, several centuries after the Bible was completed, yet its roots go back much further in history. Now, this dude right here, this is Emperor Constantine. All right, a supposed to be statue of Constantine. Now, we know Constantine was an Israelite. All right, he was a wicked Israelite, though. He worshipped Nimrod. He did all the sun worship and shit. But he was an Israelite. He was a wicked Israelite. He wasn't a fucking Edomite. He was an Israelite. A wicked one. Because you got wicked Israelites. Alright. So Cornelius. I mean not. Yeah. Cornelius was an Israelite. But Emperor Constantine was an Israelite. He was a wicked Israelite. Alright. It says the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. It says while himself not really Christian. It says convened and played a major role in the Council of Nicaea. Now we go back to the Council of Nicaea. We'll understand how these religions got established. That's why the Hebrew Israelites, the prophets, the ones that woken up to the truth, the ones that the Most High brought to the truth, they're teaching this word, this gospel, which means good news and truth and sincerity. We're not under no religion. 
Hebrew is our language. Israelite is our nationality. So we prophesy in the downfall of this place called America because this place called America has established religions. All right. All the religions you can think of that's out is all man-made and false doctrine. Okay. You can, you can look this up. Now, Emperor Constantine was a wicked Israelite. All right. He did a lot of sun worship and shit like that. You can look him up. You know, he did a lot of wicked shit. He created Christianity, the religion of Christianity. All right. And which goes back to the Council of Nicaea. That's why you got all these religions that we have that we see going on today. It says, uh, which laid the ground, which laid the groundwork for acceptance of the Trinity doctrine. Because this this all goes back to Nimrod. You know, Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Easter, you know, um, uh, all these the months of the year, January, February, March, the weekdays. All that shit all goes back to Greek, and it all goes back to Nimrod. It all goes to the sun worship, uh, to, to you know, the, the days of the week, a Sunday, all that shit, man. It says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It says, my people assume that everything that bears the label Christian uh, must have originated with Jesus Christ and his early followers. But this is definitely not the case. All we have to do is look at the words of Jesus Christ and his apostles to see that this is clearly not true. It says, historical records shows, just as Jesus and the New Testament writers uh, foretold, various satirical ideas and teachers rose up from within the early church uh, and inf infiltrated it from without. It says, Christ himself warned his followers, take heed that no, that no one deceives you for many will come in my name and i will deceive thee now i want to get to the main point all right i want to get to the main point because this video will be long so i want to go we're going to go to where it comes from what is the trinity it says historically the central dogma of christianity now the christianity is a religion which was created created if i'm if i'm mistaken brothers can correct me in the video but you know looking for research Christianity or the religion was created in the year 325 AD. Okay, if I'm if I'm mistaken, brothers can correct me, but I believe it's 325 AD. All right, or 345, 325 AD. All right, it says, what is Christianity? Historically, it says the central dogma of Christianity, Roman Catholicism. It says Eastern Orthodox, Angel Angelicanism. All right, mainstream. Uh, Protestantism, pro Protestantism, it says, but the term Trinity does not appear in the Bible. What, what its meaning of Christian mystery of faith, Holy Trinity? So, it's not in the Bible. The Trinity is nowhere in the Scriptures. All right, and you Christians can look through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The Trinity is nowhere in the Scriptures. All right, so if it's nowhere in the Scriptures. Where does it go back to? It clearly goes back to something else. If it's not in the Bible, it's clearly man-made, and it goes back to some. It goes back to a, a heathen nation. All right, it goes back to a heathen nation. So we're gonna go to the main point. I want to get to the main point. Three twenty-five A.D. All right. So here it is: Council of Nicaea in the modern-day Western Tur Turkey in A.D. three twenty-five. That's when Christianity was established. Constantine, although held by many to be the first Christian Roman Empire, was actually a sun worshiper who was only baptized on his deathbed. During his reign, he had his eldest son and his wife murdered. All right. He was also vehemently anti-Semitic, referring in one of his edicts to the detestable Jewish crowd and the customs of of these most wicked men customs that were in fact rooted in the Bible and practiced by Jesus and his apostles. Now we understand where it says anti-Semitic, all right. You had Israelites of the flesh that was in the ways of the heathen, but he was an Israelite. He was he Constantine was an was an Israelite. He was a wicked Israelite though. He did a lot of sun worship. As you can see, he did some he was a sun worshiper. All right. He was an Israelite. All right. It says, an emperor in the period of the great tumult within the Roman Empire. All right, I want to go further down. All right, 
Now we're going to get to the Trinity because I just want to get straight to the Trinity. I don't want this video to be really long because I want to pull out some scriptures proving that the Messiah and the Heavenly Father are two separate entities. We're going to get to that, Lord willing. That's why I'm trying to just read through to get the meat, you know, because I don't want to be in this video. This video is two hours long, you know, but I just want to edify those that knew in this truth. They can understand that the Trinity is nowhere in the scriptures and it's unbiblical. All right. That shit goes back to Nimrod and it's wicked. All right. It says, but now Constantine faced a new challenge. Religion researchers Karen Armstrong explains in a history of God that one of the first problems that had to be resolved was the doctrine of God. A new danger arose from within, which split Christians into bitterly warning camps. All right. Now look. It says, the doctrine of the Trinity. All right. Debate over the nature of God of the Council of Nicaea. 325 AD, that's when it was created, Christianity. But I want to get to the main point. All right, we're going to get to the main point. Uh, still talking about Constantine. Salaka. Here we go. Now, this is where this is where the Trinity Doctrine comes from. Anybody that disagree with what I'm saying, do the research. Because this is the problem. You Christians out there, y'all don't do no research. All right? Y'all talk, 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 talk. Y'all don't read. Y'all don't do no research. Y'all don't read y'all Bible. Y'all don't do no research. Y'all listen to a pastor flap his goddamn gums all goddamn day, and you're not being edified with nothing. You're being, you're being taught water, philosophized doctrine, research. All right? It says the groundwork of the official acceptance of the Trinity was not laid, but it looked more than three centuries after Jesus Christ's death. Now, we know the Messiah's name is not Jesus Christ. His name is Yahushai, Hamashiach Yahushai. We know that. But, you know, I'm just reading for verbatim off of this, you know, off of the, uh, you know, off of this uh, article. It says, and resurrection from his unbiblical teaching to emerge. All right. Now, this is the Trinity. This shit goes back to Egypt. This is a Hamite custom. So you people that's Hebrew Israelites, and when I when I say Hebrew Israelites, I'm Salak y'all. Let me re let me reiterate that Salak y'all. You carnal minded jakes, you two thirds that believe in the Trinity, and you call yourself Christianity. All right, you call yourself Christianity. You, if you're in that Nimrod shit, you are gonna be destroyed for doing that. All right, because Christianity is is wicked as fuck, and it goes off of sun worship, and the Trinity goes back to Egypt. You can look this up. All right. It says, original from Kemet, Egypt. That's a Hamite custom. It says that inspired religion, original trinity. Look at that. Religion, original trinity, original immaculate conception, virgin birth, Greek, all right, Isis, Osiris, Horus, all right, Roman, Mary, Holy Ghost, Jesus. So that shit, that trinity shit, it goes back to Egypt. So you, you're doing sun worship and you're going to be destroyed for doing that. All right. You're going to be fucking destroyed for doing that. This is, this is wicked, man. This is why you got to get out of the, those churches. All right. Cause these churches is not saving people. They're destroying you. All right. And you want to get mad and get emotional. You Christians want to get mad or emotional, but this is research. This isn't edited. This is research, man. You can look this up. It says the council of Nicaea did not end the controversy. Karen Armstrong explains that Athanius managed to impose his theology on his dele on his delegates with the emperor breathing down his neck. Now we're going to go further down, further down. All right, Council of Nicaea, blah, 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 blah. Debate shift for the Holy Spirit. Uh, I want to get to the main point. All right, it says the men, uh, Bissau, Bishop of Caesarea, his brother Gregory, Bishop of, of Nicaea and Gregory of Nazianus were all trained in Greek philosophy. All right. Armstrong P113, which no doubt affected their outlook and beliefs. Greek philosophy's influence on the Trinity doctrine. All right. The Trinity made sense as a mythical spiritual experience going down. All right. We're going to get down. I'm trying to get to the main point, you guys. Salak Yakim. It says the, the Trinity. It says, hopefully you brothers can see. The Trinity. It says, Holy Trinity is mother, father, and child. It is Christianity. It says, in Christianity, they suppress the feminine aspect by replacing the mother 
with the Holy Spirit. It says, Spirit is nothing but emotion, energy in motion, which is the obviously the the fem the feminine aspect of spiritual essence. The soul is a masculine aspect of your spiritual essence, which deals with thought. It says the soul is more intellectual and directs you through your intentions. The child is a physical body learning how to navigate through physical realm and the spiritual and souls as if guides. Separate but equal. All three aspects are necessary in the information of what most refers to as God. Ongoing disputes leading the Council of Const Constantinople. If I'm saying it right. But I want to get to the main point. Where can I get it? The truth about the Trinity. Salakiakim. The Trinity becomes official doctrine. The teachings of the three Cappadocian, the theologians made impossible for the Council of the Constantinople, if I'm saying it right, Salakia, to affirm the divinity, the affirm the divinity of the Holy Spirit, which is up which is up in the point had somewhere been clearly stated, not even in scripture. All right. So again, the Trinity is nowhere in the Bible. All right. That's what it's basically saying. The council adopted this statement that translate into English as in part. We believe in one God, the father almighty make of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten son of God. Begotten of the Father before all ages, and we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. The statement also affirmed belief in one holy Catholic meaning in the con context universal, uh, whole or completed in the apostolic church. The apostolic shit goes into the Trinity too, and they going off as well. That apostolic shit is is another form of Christianity. Uh, I used to be in that shit, and I'm glad the Most High pulled me out. That all that shit goes into that that sun worship shit, and you're gonna be destroyed if you don't come out of that. <clears throat> um, yeah, but mainly, man, my main point mainly, if you guys want to read more about this, you can. The main thing is that the Trinity is nowhere in the Bible. And it goes back to Egypt. That's the main thing. The Trinity is nowhere in the scriptures. So like it. So. Uh, long story short. What I'm going to do now is. Uh, we're going to pull some scriptures out. And uh, we're going to prove. That the Messiah and the Heavenly Father. Are two separate entities. Alright. I'm just going to go off the, off the top of the dome. Uh, I got so many scriptures I want to start from. But I'll just pull out. Uh. Uh, I'm just going to pull off the dome. But yeah, man. I'm just going to speak for verbatim, so bear with me out here. I'm just going to use it for verbatim. Uh, so we're going to go straight to the point. All right. <clears throat> now, we're going to pull scriptures out. And... Everything that I'm going to go into is according to scripture and proven, you know, that the Messiah and the Heavenly Father are two separate entities. They're not the same person. All right. That doctrine is nowhere in the scriptures. All right. Now, this is Acts 5 and 31. It says, him have Yahweh exalted. That word exalted means to lift. It says, with his right hand. All right. So let's read again. It says, him have the heavenly father exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for it, to give repentance to Israel, forgiveness of sins. So the Messiah died for the nation of Israel. We have forgiveness of sins. All right. The Israelites only. All right. That's not the main point, but that's just one of the things that I want to bring out. Uh, let me see. Here it is. This is Luke twenty two sixty nine. 69. It says, hereafter shall the son of man, who's the son of man, the only begotten son. All right, Yahweh Shai, that's his true name. Yah means he, Yahweh Shai means savior, deliver. All right, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his true name is Yahweh Shai, and he's a so-called black man according to the scriptures of Revelation chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. All right, he's a so-called black man according to the scriptures. 
All right, the Messiah's not white. He don't have blonde hair, blue eyes, straight hair. That's false ass doctrine as well. That's white supremacy. We're not dealing with that shit. Get that shit out of the window. All right, let's continue. This is Luke twenty two sixty nine. It says, Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand. Let's read again. Luke twenty two sixty nine. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of Yahweh. So that the Messiah sits on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. All right, he is not one being with the Heavenly Father. They're two separate entities. All right, they're not the same. All right, they are not the same. All right, they are not the same. Let's read Acts 2 and 33. It says, Therefore, being by the right hand of, of Yahweh exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed for she has set forth this which ye now see and hear. It says, therefore, being by the right hand of the Most High Exalted. The Messiah is on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father, man. Let me, pause. Let me see if you can get some more scriptures out. Salakia. Salakia, Akim. Let's get out. Uh, I had the scripture in my head just now. Uh, 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 let's get out the mediator. Because that proves too that uh, that mainly is the main proof right there. Uh, that's actually scripture I was trying to get. Uh, the mediator. All right. Now, you can read this. This is proven, too, letting you know that the Messiah and the Heavenly Father are two separate entities. This is 1 Peter 2 and 5. It says, for there is one power. See, one power, one Yahweh. There's one Yahweh and one mediator between Yahweh and men, between the Most High and men. The man, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. So, Yahweh Shai is our mediator. So, if there's one Heavenly Father and one mediator, that's letting you know that they're two separate entities. They're not the same. How we know that? For there is one power, and because and is speak is is it's letting you know it's it's two different things. If I say I have a I have a all right, let's say I, I have a screwdriver, I have a flathead screwdriver, and I have a regular screwdriver, or uh, I got black boots and I got black shoes. I got black boots. And white socks. That's letting you know. I'm just you know speaking for verbatim with and, all right. So it's speaking plural. It's it's, it's telling you this. You got two different things, all right. They're two separate entities. They're not the same. It says for there is one power and one mediator. So there's one was one heavenly father and one mediator. Yahweh Shai is our mediator to get to the heavenly father. You you Christians know that because you guys even read uh, John 14. Where he says, no man get up to the Father but by me. So that's letting you know. He's already telling you there that he, him and Heavenly Father are not the same person. They're two separate entities, man. They're two separate entities. First Timothy 2 and 5. For there is one power and one mediator between the Heavenly Father and men. It says the man, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. So that lets you know right there. Yahweh Shai and the Heavenly, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are two separate entities. The Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son are two separate entities. They are not the same person. All right, you people that say Jesus is God, you're going off. All right, you Christians that say Jesus is God, you're going off because they're they're two separate entities. All right, even though he said that the Father is in me, he was speaking plural. The Lord got prophets right now that he's speaking through. Does that mean that they are the Heavenly Father? Because the Most High is gave them the spiritual power of wisdom, knowledge, understanding. gave gave the prophets that's on the highways and byways. This true. So does that mean that they the Heavenly Father? Because now the Lord speaks to them? Because the, the scriptures say the Lord speaks to his men. So you saying that so you believe that the prophets are are the Heavenly Father? No. Alright? You guys gotta stop being so fucking dull as dirt, man. This is first Timothy two and five. For there is one power and one mediator between the Heavenly Father and men. It says the man Hamashiach Yahushai. So there you go. They're two separate entities. There are two separate entities, man. There are two separate entities, man. All right, let me let me see if I speak for verbatim, because uh, there's a scripture I feel like I'm me missing. Um, I'm just speaking for verbatim. Just speaking for verbatim. Um, thought I had that scripture. I feel like I'm missing a scripture, Akim, but if I, I'm going to see if I am. If not, then, you know, so be it. I'll end it there. But, uh, uh, 
Here it is. First Peter three and 22. It says, who is gone into heaven and is gone who and is on the right hand of Yahweh. I'll read it for verbatim because you just got, you just got dumbfounded, you know, wacky tacky Christians that's, that just don't understand. So we're going to read it for, I'm going to read it for verbatim. This is first Peter three and 22. It says, who is gone into heaven and is, and is on the right hand of God. So Yahweh Shai sits on the right hand side of heavenly father. They're not the same person. It says, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels, it says, angels and authorities and powers being made subjected unto him. So that's letting you know right there that he sits on the right hand side of the heavenly father. All right. That lets you know right there, man. All right. Let me see. Uh. Here it is right here. This is Hebrews 10 and 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And that's talking about the Messiah. He was that sacrifice for the Israelites. He gave his life up for the Israelites. And when you read uh, Matthews 1 and 21, that proves that as well. So that's a cut. It says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, and sat down on the right hand. That's talking about the Messiah. Because the Messiah was that sacrifice. Alright. He was that sacrificial lamb for us to be able to have repentance, man. Alright. So that's a cut. And that's showing you right there. If if and and on top of that, hold on. Matter of fact, uh, we're gonna get that scripture out too, because you Christians are dumb as hell. You know, you, you really are. Um, um, uh, let me see. Uh, I want to go to that scripture. Um where the Messiah was on a cross. And, um. Let me see if I can get that scripture. Uh, yeah. Matthew 27. Now, you got Christians that say that he was talking to himself. You sound stupid. He can't talk to himself. Alright? You cannot fucking. You guys are going off, man. Let's read. This is Matthew 27 and 45. It says, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Yahawashai cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. It says, that is to say, my power, my power, why hast thou forsaken me? The Messiah was going through a lot of stuff in the flesh. All right. He felt like the Lord was forsaking him, you know, but he was still dying. He was dying for the nation of Israel. He knew what his purpose was for, but he was in the flesh, you know, and he was going through, you know, just the pain and all the things that he was going through. It says some of them that stood there, it says they heard that said the man called for Eli's, Elias. It says in straight way, it says one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on the reed and gave him to drink. It says then rest said, let be. Let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Yahawashai, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yelled up the ghost. And he was talking to the Heavenly Father right there. Yahawashai was talking to the Heavenly Father. He was not talking to himself. He was talking to the Heavenly Father. All right. He was talking to the Heavenly Father. That's letting you know there are two separate entities. All right. He was talking to the Heavenly Father, man. And he couldn't be talking to himself right here. That don't make no sense. Why would he say, why would he say my power, my power? Come on now. Let's not be fucking stupid, man. But you got, you got Christians that this is a stumbling block for them. This is a stumbling block for them. All right. The Messiah died for the nation of Israel. Let me get out one more scripture. Cause this is blunt right here. This is blunt right here. Cause you Christians want to say that the Messiah is the heavenly father. Well, answer me this. When Peter asked the Messiah, he said, he said to Yahawashai, he said, uh, good master, what good thing that I may do that I may have eternal life. I'm going to get it out. And it's in red lettering too. This is a cut. And I'm going to end it here with this. Now, because <clears throat> you want to believe in the Trinity. And the Trinity is unbiblical. It's nowhere in the scriptures. This is Matthew 19. And I want to get out. Uh, uh, we're going to read from verse 16 to verse 17. All right. This is why all you got to do is read. You Christians, you wacky tacky Christians, you need to read. This is Matthew 19, 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, 
Good master. Now, Peter's talking to the Messiah. He's talking to Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, and behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Meaning to receive the kingdom of heaven. That's what he, that's what, that's what one of the apostles asked Yahweh Shai. All right. Verse 17. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? He said, he's Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ. He said, why are you calling me good? There is none good but one. That is Yahweh. He said the Heavenly Father is good. He said, I'm not good. He said the Heavenly Father is good. So he's already telling you and letting you know that that's that right there. He's already letting you know that, that, that the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father and the Messiah are two separate entities. They're not the same. He said, I'm not good. If he was the Heavenly Father, he wouldn't have said, I'm not good. He wouldn't have said, I'm not good. The Messiah, why would the Messiah say that he's not good? That don't make no sense. If he if he is the heavenly father, why would he say I'm, why would he tell his apostle I'm not good? That don't make no sense. He would if he was the heavenly father, he would if he was one being with the heavenly father, he wouldn't have said I'm not good. He wouldn't have said that to him. Let's read again. This is Matthew 19:16. That don't make no sense. Let's read again. This is Matthew 19:16. And behold, one came and said unto him, "Good master." And that word master means teacher, by the way. It's or instructor. It says, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Meaning, to receive the kingdom of heaven. And this is what Yahweh Shai said. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is, there is none good but one. That is Yahweh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So you're supposed to keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. Now, you're not going to keep them perfectly, but you're supposed to rehearse them to the, to the best of your ability. You're supposed to keep them to the best of your ability. Because that's showing the heavenly Father and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, that you love him. You know, but the main thing is he told the apostles that he's not good. He said there's only one good. That's the Heavenly Father. So he's already letting you know that they're two separate entities. So that's a cut, man. You know, everything that, that is proven is proven. Everything that everything that I'm saying is proven. I want to go back to the Trinity real quick. I want to go back to that, you know. Really quick, and then I'm going to end it. This is why you got to research stuff. You know, that Trinity stuff goes, it goes back to Egypt, man. All this stuff that y'all don't even know about, it, it goes all the way back to Egypt. You guys got to look stuff up, man. You Christians got to really look these things up. And it goes to Trinity. Look at this. I'm not making this up, man. When you put in the Trinity, it says how Egypt was Christian before the birth of of Christ. All right. Now we know Christ is not the true name of the Messiah. All right. We know his name is Yahushua. But that all go the Trinity goes back to Nimrod. All right. That's where it goes back to. It all goes back to Nimrod, man. And if you put this in, you'll see you'll see that. It goes all the way back to Nimrod, man. That shit goes back to Nimrod. Look at that. That Trinity shit, it goes back to Nimrod. And all you got to do is look this stuff up. All you got to do is look this up, man. It goes all the way back into the Babylonian. It goes into the Kemet. See that? It all goes back to Nimrod, man. The Trinity, the original Holy Trinity. You can look this up. Look at this. It says, Osiris resurrected story with the with those found in Christianity. The Egyptians of every period in which they are known to us believe that Osiris was a divine origin. That's where the, that's where the Trinity came. It goes back to Egypt. Did that all goes back to Nimrod, all the way back to Egypt? All right. And it says uh, it says that he suffered death and mullet, mull, 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 mute, mutilation at the hands of the powers of evil. That after a great struggle with these powers. He arose again and he became and henceforth the king of the underworld of the judge of the dead. It says in that because he had conquered death, the righteous also might conquer death in Osiris the Christian. Look at that, man. It says Egyptians found the, 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 the prototype of Christ and in the pictures and statues of Osiris suckling her son Os Osiris. Uh, I mean, Horus, Salakia, they perceived the prototypes of the Virgin Mary and her child. 
So that Trinity shit, the Trinity, which is right up here, I was just looking at it. That that Trinity shit goes back to this, man. The Trinity, it all goes back to this. You can look this shit up, man. This is not my own interpretation. This is all research. The Trinity. So, the Trinity doctrine is, I'm telling you, it's wicked, man. It's nowhere in the scriptures. This stuff is nowhere in the scriptures, man. Let me see if I can just get something. It's a lock here. But look. But yeah, man, you know, I ain't going to keep this long, but it's showing you, man, the original Holy Trinity. It goes back to Egypt. That's a wicked custom, man. And if you believe in the Trinity, woe unto you because you're going to be destroyed, man. You're going to be destroyed. So, hey, man, you know, Lord willing, this video is edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praise to you. And double honors to the others and apostles of the great millstone. Lord willing, this video is edifying. So, hey, man. The Trinity is unbiblical. It is nowhere in the scriptures. And if you believe in the Trinity, that is going to lead to you to be destroyed. Because that is false doctrine. It is wicked. And it's nowhere in the scriptures, man. Get out of those religious, uh, those religion, uh, those religious uh, belief systems, man. All right? Because you're not going to receive salvation there, man. The only way you're going to receive salvation is following the true men of the Lord that are out teaching this word in truth and sincerity who are the elders and apostles of great millstone to the sincere brothers out there that's teaching the same doctrine as great millstone man so hey man lord willing this video is edifying next time i say shalom